For those waiting for another CRT television repair, you're in luck. I have a 14 inch, this is a Emerson. It's made by Funai. It's a combination VCR TV that was brought in from a uh, retro gamer because the picture is kind of distorted, shaking and size is changing and he wants this thing fixed. So let's take a look at this one and see what's wrong with it. Besides me sucking at this game because I haven't played it in years, uh, this TV that I'm working on here today has a small problem, and that is it seems to have a problem in the vertical circuit. Ooh. Okay, one of the things that makes uh, CRT televisions popular is the ability to play raster type games like this one because these type of games the older games just do not work well on modern televisions the reason for that is because all modern televisions there's a number of frames delay from the time that the video signal is received and the time it's actually displayed and the number of frames can vary anywhere from about three to about eight frames, depending on the complexity of the display. The 4K monitors actually are a little bit worse. Uh, they have an, a longer delay because of the amount of processing required to scale up the, the, the picture to that 4K picture. Now, of course, when you're watching TV, you don't notice this ever because the sound is delayed by the same amount of time that it takes to process the picture. So you're not seeing any lip sync. But the problem is if you're playing a game that's expecting the video to be drawn line by line, that poses a big problem because well, you just can't run around mazes and you can't shoot at anything because by the time you receive the image on the screen, you've missed the window of opportunity. So for video games, classic video games, these CRT sets are abs an absolute must. And that's why, because they're becoming more and more rare, more and more game collectors are looking to keep them. I got this one in from a gamer because they play retro games such as Pac-Man. This one's actually my own uh, game board that I've got for this. It's one that I found. I paid five bucks for this thing. This is the unit here. And it's just, it's got like four Pac-Man games on it. Five bucks. I bought this thing. Uh, oh, probably, I don't know. It was probably, uh, I'm going to say probably about 19 or 20, 2000. And I'm going to say probably 2005, somewhere around like that. When my kids were little and they were into the, the games like this, I picked up a couple of them. I got another one that plays another game. I don't know where it is. My son's got it somewhere and I've got one that has a bunch of different games in it that are you know a bunch of these raster type games I think it's got about 30 different games in it these type of controllers you've got to find it it's around somewhere but you know and say these ones here and things like this these uh cheap nickel metal hydride batteries work perfect by the way um even though the voltage is a little bit lower they work perfect anyway this set came into me because as you can see the top of the maze is a little bit cut off too because it should be more like that I, I I'm I Guaranteed, this is going to be a connection problem, this, a solder connection that's gone bad in the vertical circuit. Now, this particular set that I'm working on here also just happens to have a VCR in it as well. So it's kind of a bonus to have one of these, uh, these TVs. And, um, you know, it's, they're, they're good for two things. One, if you've got old VHS tapes, you have a way of playing them. And, of course, it's great for the old video games. But uh, anyway, this one came into me. The guy that owns this set really wants it back bad because uh, he looked around for a while to find one and picked this thing up and it worked fine for a while and then started doing this so he didn't want to start poking around and he's actually the guy that owns it is actually a viewer of my channel he uh, said yeah i've watched your channel he says i just don't want to risk damaging it so uh, he drove this thing out to me from about uh i guess about 60 70 kilometers away i guess each way from another community over anyway he drove this thing out to me today and asked me to take a look at it so Let's get working on it. If 
if we look down at the uh, where the yoke plugs in, this being the yoke here, the, the deflection yoke, you'll see that the wires coming off the yoke are plugged in right here. So this is the area I'm going to concentrate on in the uh, vertical output circuit. Now, typically the big red wire, because it's a heavier wire, we know that that's going to be the horizontal output and the blue wire is typically the horizontal return. The reason why this is a bigger red wire is because, well, this one's got about a thousand volt pulse on it from the direct output from the horizontal output transistor. Uh, the blue wire is a return wire, so it's not going to have as much voltage on that. But typically it's grounded or going to the return capacitor. So the brown and the yellow, these two here, are going to be the vertical uh, wires. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll inspect the plug here. I don't think it's going to be a plug issue though because if it was the plug that was at fault, then uh, we wouldn't have any um, deflection whatsoever. And the plug looks fine. I don't see any pitting or burning around the plug here. Um, the circuitry looks like uh, this one here is, that's probably the horizontal, that's, that's a transistor. So that's gonna be the horizontal output transistor. And this is gonna be the horizontal drive transformer over here. So this is gonna be horizontal. Uh, components. So the vertical is probably over here on this side. This is probably an IC over here. What is this? What is this part here? Let me grab a light. I can see a little bit better. And uh, this is a T. Or is it TDA or SA? It's a uh, LA seven eight zero four zero. This is an IC. This is going to be the vertical output IC. I um, pretty much guarantee that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I mean, I might I may get in here with some test equipment if I can't find it, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the board a good vertical, or <laughs> vertical, good inspection of the vertical circuit because uh, the fact that I could just tap on the cabinet and the picture would shift tells me that there is a connection problem in here. So I may not even need to get in here with test equipment. Uh, it may be a very, very simple fix. So let me just uh, turn this unit on its side. Now the problem with these type of sets is that the set is not going to stand on the side very well. I'm going to have to kind of prop it up. The uh, chassis will hold it up though. So that will prevent the set from falling over and breaking the picture tube. So I'm just going to look at the circuitry here and see whether I see anything in this area up here that is of interest. Get my my helpers here, my, gla my magnifiers and my flashlight going so I can get a closer look here and just see whether I can spot anything. I'm going to look around that horizontal, or that, sorry, that vertical output IC and yes, um, there, certainly there are some connections in here. I'll get you a close-up of this so you guys can see it. Um, this concerns me. We'll try resoldering this and see if it fixes it first of all. Well, here's where I'm looking at right in here. I don't have my light on real bright here. But it might help a bit. Crank this up a bit. It might, might help you guys see it a bit better. But uh, if we look right around this pin right here, maybe I'm too bright. We'll try that dimmer. Might be a little easier on camera if I don't have the light cranked all the way up. But if we look around uh, this IC here, these connections certainly don't look good. Look at that one up here. Yeah, they look pretty bad. That may be the problem with the set. So let's just, first of all, resolder that IC and see whether that fixes the problem. It may be something else, but that could very well be the only problem on this set.
Okay, that looks a little better. I'm just going to look at some other one, other connections on the board here. Yeah, those ones look bad, but I don't see any other ones that look particularly uh, bad on the set at this point. So we can get some of the uh, connections on the flyback. And uh, the plug, the plug looks okay too. Yeah, the plug, the plug over here, which is just off of, out of frame with the camera, but the plug is right, right in here, and they, they look okay. Let's see if we can get it to focus in here a bit better. Those are the the connections for the plug, and I think they look okay. So let's uh, just turn this thing on and see whether that fixes this one, or whether we have to spend some more time and uh, dig a little deeper. So I thought at first that had the problem solved because it's not do doing it now, but when I reached around in the back and was just poking around here, I, um, see that? There's a capacitor that might be loose. There, to see that one? There we go. Okay, so as I was poking around in the back, I was just touching some of the electrolytics, just giving them a, because it, it still looked like it was a bit stretched. So I started poking my fingers around in the back, and this is what I find. There. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but when I'm moving this little capacitor, this little orange cap, right there. You see the picture? It's shaking up and down. So we may have a... That cap may have an internal um, failure inside the capacitor itself. Uh, sometimes that where the where the uh, conductor, the legs go into it, uh, they could have had a, a failure where it's welded or I guess it's spot welded to the the foil inside. But when I just when I just move the can, just touch the can, it does that. So I'm going to change that cap. And we'll see whether that fixes the problem on this one. And keep our fingers crossed that that's all that's wrong with it. So this is a 2.2 microfarad at 50 volts. It's a high temperature cap. So let me go and find one. I thought maybe you guys might like to see what the inside of this capacitor looks like if I can get into this thing. Um, what I suspect this happened is where the leads go in. Inside here, on the other side of the seal, I suspect that where they connect to the foil, they are... Um, no good so let's just see if I can cut into this thing I don't know if I can cut into this or not these snips are pretty sharp so let's see if I can get into this thing by cut cut the top off here if I can and I'll get a electrolytic all over the place but it's okay it's a fairly small cap so I don't think there'll be much in it let's see if I can get this on camera open there we go what I was hoping wouldn't happen. I suspect that inside the cap that this where this wire goes in is where it's broken. If I can get the guts out of this thing. 
Maybe if I snip the rest of the can open so you guys can see what's inside one of these electrolytic caps. Basically what's inside here is it's, it's a couple strips of foil and they've got paper insulating between two electrodes of foil. And uh, if I can get this thing open, I'm getting electrolytic all over my fingers here now, but that's okay. There shouldn't be any PCBs in this thing, it's not that old. Some of the old caps, you wouldn't want to do this because they were they were filled with the uh, PCB oil, and that stuff is nasty stuff. So you wouldn't want to be taking apart an old uh, oil-filled cap, that's for sure. These ones here are pretty much all water-based, so they're not really that hazardous. What's in them? Okay. So there's the guts. This is the plug that keeps the electrolytic in. And if we cut this paper into the paper here, we should be able to open this up and unroll it. Okay, here's the foil that I'm talking about. So here's what makes up the inside of a capacitor. It's, it's just a, a coil of a foil that is uh, separated by paper. And these are what I'm referring to. This is what I think where the failure was, is where the, the legs, the leads that go to the outside, they're connected to this foil. There's one foil piece there. And I think probably what happened on this capacitor is that it wasn't... Uh, connected properly internally and just the fact of, of bending it back and forth I was uh, changing maybe not going open completely but it was changing the uh, resistance where it was bonded to the internal plate see these are the inter and they're just a foil they'll just fall right apart right this is a, this is just just a very 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 thin piece of, of aluminum foil and they're kind of uh, they're not welded or spot welded. They're more like uh, press fit. The uh, you can see right here how they're put together. There's a piece right there, right? So when the, all they do is they just press them together, and it crimps, it crimps the the lead, the conductor that leads to the outside world, which is that right there. That's what's crimped onto the foil. And I think probably what's happened on this was. Right in here, where they where they where they press them together, you can see it right there on the on my thumb. That uh, I think probably was uh, had deteriorated, and uh, just moving the capacitor back and forth was making that connection break. That's what I think went wrong with this one. Well, there's something you'll never see again: main electronics. That gives you an idea of how long I've had this bag of little caps, because of course, main electronics was uh, one of our premier suppliers here in the Lower Mainland for about 40 years. The uh, owner of the store was a personal friend of mine. I had known him since uh, well, I, I knew both Daniel and Phil from the time I was about, I'm going to go say I was probably 12 or 13 when I started going in there to uh, buy parts, taking that long bus ride from where I live. And from where I live, 
it was let's see I had to take I had to take the bus that went all the way downtown Vancouver to take me all the way down to Granville Street and then I had to catch another bus that took me along uh, I think it was Hastings then I had to get on another bus to get to Broadway and then I had to take the Broadway bus to Maine and then take the main bus down Main Street to get to Maine Electronics and it was it was when I was you know, when I was a kid it, that was a long ride that was you know a good you you spend the better part of a day like on a Saturday when I was going to go buy parts I would spend the better part of a day going down there to buy parts and uh, I dealt with them for many many years and just this past couple of years, um, Phil, the original owner, he would have been probably in his 80s. He passed away, and uh, his son Daniel, who took over the business years ago, Daniel ran the ran the shop for years. Um, he passed away within a couple of weeks of cancer. And Daniel's son, I saw him the last time I was in the store, and that was back when I was buying a part buying the transistor to fix that leak Delta 75 that I had to get a replacement transistor for. And that was the last time I was in the store. And at the time, he told me he didn't know whether he was going to continue running the business or not, but uh, unfortunately he decided to close the doors and sell off the inventory and Vancouver lost its uh, premier electronics components shop that all the electronic repair shops went to buy their parts. We've still got one shop now, but uh, the shop that we have now does not have anywhere near the inventory that Maine had. So I'll hang on to this, even when the parts are gone, I'll hang on to this bag just for all time, old time sakes, because I've got a few of them, but gives you an idea of how long I've had those parts in my parts bin. Okay, we'll just solder in a new capacitor. Let's check it out and see if it works. Hmm. We still have a bit of a problem here. The picture is still pulsating ever so slightly. See this this uh, game generator has Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, Super Pac-Man, and Pac and Pal. And uh, if you wonder why my high scores were uh, so low, well, it has an option to erase the high scores. That high score that you saw there, that was just the one I got today, just playing around with this thing for a few minutes while I was uh, getting set to make the video. It looks like we still have a bit of a problem on this set. Let's see if I can n narrow this down a little more, because it seems to be the picture is, you can see it moving slightly. I wonder if it's this part right below it. It doesn't. Uh, it looks like it's okay. Well, I'm just going to touch this one up here. When I was taking the other part out, I may have heated up this little chip component here a bit. Make sure that that one's soldered in good. Okay, let's try it now and see whether it's going to fix it. Yeah, it looks like it's got the shake corrected. That looks a little better. Oops. That was me. I moved the batteries 
killed the battery connection and locked up the game. Yeah, 2006, that's when these were, they released these things. I bought it down at Circuit City. If anybody remembers Circuit City. Big retailer in the States. Bankrupt in 2008. Of course, because this machine has a video machine in it, let's make sure that the VCR works, you know, because, oh, the VCR doesn't work. Good thing I checked that. Well, maybe it does. I just didn't push the tape in far enough. That might explain why it didn't go in. Mm, I think the VCR has a problem. I guess we have to fix the VCR. It's gonna say, what a better way to play your video games, right? To record your gameplay onto VHS tape so you can show off to your friends how good you really were. And the VCR doesn't work. I'll just try it one more time. I'll try a different tape. I'll try my color bar tape. I know this tape's okay even though it's got a corner's kind of buggered up on it. But it might it might be a mode switch on this if it hasn't been used for a while. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think it's probably the mode switch. And just operating it a few times has cleared it up. But we'll check it and see. Try this tape again, even though the first two times I put this tape in, nothing happened. This one here should have Stevie Ray Vaughan on it. Yep. So I think the VCR probably just needs the mode switch to be cleaned. So when it was when it was brought into me, the complaint wasn't the VCR; it was the picture was jumping. That's what it was brought in for. Uh, they didn't say anything about the VCR. Maybe the VCR hasn't been used on this thing. I think this this TV probably sees exclusive use playing video games. But having a functional VCR is always a bonus in case someone hands you a videotape and says, "Here, check this out." I always hated these combo machines because they're just such a pain in the butt to work on. This is a Funai is who made this unit. Made in China, of course. Funai was one of the big uh, manufacturers of VCRs back in the in the, in the last days of their Existence. I don't know what year this TV is. I'm going to say probably around 2002, maybe. 2003. Is there a date on this thing? It's um, 2002. May 2002 is when this was made. So this would have been right near the end of uh, CRT television and uh, right near probably near the end of the of the line for these combo machines so basically have to lift the chassis out to work on this unit it should just lift out of this thing if I'm not mistaken it should just lift out power on plug of course turn on the space for this uh, where are we? Okay, there's a couple of catches here that hold it in place. And then it should just flip up. Like that, and then it should just lift it out. And have the TV fall over on its face when I'm working on it and break the tube. As I say, these were not. These were not an easy unit to work on because there's just no there's no room. I gotta unplug the speaker first before I do anything. And as you can see, the speaker's plugged in up front here. I'll do the speaker. That gave me a little more 
clearance to work on this thing. Yeah, where is the mode switch hiding on this unit? It's probably, I think it's right down here. It should be right below this gear, right down there. Yes, that is where the mode switch lives. And that's what I'm gonna clean, because I think that's causing our problems. Just from the way it behaved, and the fact that the first couple times I put a tape in it, it just kind of went through the motions, but didn't go into play, and then ejected the tape, I think that the mode switch is uh, likely what's going to be causing our issues. So now I have to take the deck out so I can get to the mode switch. I tell you today, and I'm not going to say the name of the business, but uh, there's a a restaurant that I like to go into once in a while, and they make you know they, they got some really good food. And I go in there on lunch on my days off. I sometimes go in there for lunch, and uh, today I was having lunch. You know, nothing unusual there. I'm I'm waiting. I'm at my table waiting for my food to be brought over. At the next table to me, there was a large family, and uh, there was a small child that was with them, about three years old, I'm going to think. And there would have been, I think the, the grandparents were there, and the mother was there, and there was another, another lady there. And then there was this kid, and this kid kept jumping up on the back of the seat and uh, blowing a whistle. Had this little one of those little toy whistles, right? Um, and it was blowing this whistle and it was making all kinds of noise. And uh, I'm just sitting there trying to have my lunch. My lunch has now been brought to me at this point. And I was trying to read the paper and you know check my emails and stuff. I enjoy my lunch and it's this kid blowing this plastic whistle. And every time he'd blow the whistle, I'd kind of look over and kind of look at him and, and kind of give the, the grandparents that were right within line of sight of me. I would kind of give them a sneer and a dirty look, like as if, like, you know, shut that kid up. And uh, he kept on going, you know, and nothing happened. And then the kid started coughing right on me. So at that point, I just turned around and said, excuse me. And the mother, she kind of looks and she says, oh, is he bothering you? I said, well, she's, is his whistle bothering you? And I, like, as if, like, I didn't even have to say, yeah, you think? And I said, I said, it's not so much that, I just don't appreciate being coughed on, is what I said to her, right? Kids coughing all those germs all over the place. And uh, anyway, uh, she says, oh, well, he's only three. And my only response to that is, and how old are you? You're his mother. You're supposed to have control of your kids. You know, your kid's standing on the seat, on the bench, on the other booth, coughing right at me. Um... Anyway, um, that's all I said. I said nothing else. And then when they're they're getting ready to leave, and I see she's talking to the, uh, the, 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 the waitress, like they're all chummy friends. And uh, the next thing I know, I, I no sooner finished my lunch. Like I had just swallowed the last bite. And I'm still finishing up my, my beverage and I'm reading the paper. And the, the girl comes up to me and she says, Sir, if you're finished, I'll have to ask you to leave because we have other people that need the table. Okay. I think I'll be going to another place the next time. I couldn't believe it. Um, less than two minutes after I'd finished eating, they were rushing me out the door when I hadn't even finished. Telling me, using the excuse. I have a feeling that the uh, the, the lady that, uh, that I kind of uh, told to control her kid said something to them. They were speaking some language other than English that I didn't catch. So I don't know what they said, but uh, I think that she said something to her and then she had to had to come and tell me that I had to leave as soon as I was done. Couldn't believe it. Anyway, I won't say the name of the restaurant, but uh, it's uh, one that I used to, well, one that I go to on a regular basis and I guess I'll be finding uh, a, different, uh, a different one to go to now. What else is holding this thing in place? I'm looking to see if there's any screws through the bottom of the board. Like sometimes they they put screws in through the circuit board and if you're not careful and you pull the chassis out, you end up breaking things. This is one of those ones that's got ribbon cables attaching the motors here, which are, oh, this is one of those terrible designs. Oh my God, this is, this is horrible, this thing. Uh, it's got these connectors. Look at this, whoa. 
Uh, this is a terrible, I don't even know I'm going to bother with this thing. I might just, I might just call it a day. There is some screws here as well. But check this out. Like I may just call this a day. These are for the connectors, for the motors. They're soldered down, these little circuit boards. They're soldered right down. Right? There's no plugs here. That's soldered right onto the board, as is this other one over here. And those are connected to motors on the, the, the VCR. So the only way to pull this chassis out is to actually unsolder these connectors and then you can take the chassis out. What a, uh, what a joke. Definitely these things were not designed for any type of service. First of all, there are screws through the board that are holding down to the chassis which have to come out, but that's beside the point. There are also, there are also two connectors that connect the drum and the, I think it's the audio control head which do not unplug. They're soldered right down to the board. The, the wire headers are soldered onto another little circuit board which is soldered down to the main board. So taking out the chassis is not a simple job. So because of that I'm not going to remove the chassis on this thing. It wasn't brought to me to fix the VCR. It was brought to me to fix the uh, vertical problem which I have fixed so as far as the as far as the videotape portion goes I'm not worried about that because uh, if I tell the guy oh I'm charging you extra because I fixed the VCR he'll be like what do you mean you fixed the VCR there was nothing wrong with it or or I didn't bring it to you to fix the VCR you know so I'm not going to waste my time on this to get at the mode switch to clean it even though I think it, it probably it probably should be cleaned this is not a design that is easy to get at to do it. And of course, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm obviously referring to this. See how they've connected this? They've just they've just taken the wire header, soldered it down to a little piece of circuit board, and then they've just butted up against the side of another board and soldered it in. There's nothing hold it in holding it in place but the solder. But to take the chassis out to work on it, I have to unsolder this header, and I have to unsolder another header down below here take this header off, take the other header off above it, and undo the plug for the capstan motor, which is, plug for the capstan motor is no problem, it's right there, right, but I have to unsolder these other headers to take the chassis out to work on it, um, to clean the, you know, to do anything on the chassis, even if you want to change the belt, you have to take that out to, to do it, it's, um, it's a, probably the worst design, and then when it's apart, you can't test it when it's apart, and then you got to re-solder everything when you put it back together, so, uh, if there was a problem with the VCR and it was brought to me to fix the VCR, it was a mechanical problem, then I probably would be taking that apart. But because it was brought to me to fix the vertical circuit and was not brought in for a VCR problem, there was never a problem claimed with the VCR. Again, they may not use it, but it didn't initially play, and then it did. So I bet you it's going to continue to work fine because operating the circuit a few times, operating the mechanism a few times, just the mechanical action of the of the uh, encoder switch moving probably cleared off some of the oxidation and it's going to work fine at this point. Certainly not worth me spending another hour taking this whole thing apart and putting it together just to clean that switch because uh, in the end it wasn't brought to me for that problem. So let's reassemble this thing and make sure that it works and then I can send it on its way. What I can do is I can get in here with my cleaner and just shoot some cleaner into the switch itself. That would be better than nothing. There, at least now there's some cleaner in the switch. So when the switch activates, it'll help clean up the contacts and keep them clean. That's better than nothing, right? But it's not worth it to take this thing all apart just to get at it to clean that switch properly. Okay, you, you'll notice on here, these are the sensors for the uh, the tape, the ends. You guys can't see what I'm pointing to. Here's the tape end sensors, look at these. They're just, again, they're on a piece of circuit board, which has just got another piece of circuit board notched into it and they're just soldered directly down you know what a cheap what a cheap way of making a mechanism this has got to be one of the worst i've seen i didn't have to work on too many of these in fact i i've never seen a chassis like this before because this was made the basically the year i left uh the business i wouldn't have seen any of these things because uh, none of them would have broken by the time i left the business I left, uh, I left the TV repair business as a job in 2003. 
the set was made in 2002, probably sold late 2002, early 2003, but I never saw any of these. I saw some that were similar to this, but not quite the same as this one. I'd say this one here, this one takes the cake as far as cheapness goes. Okay, I plug that speaker back in over the front, at the front here. See, nothing's plugged in. This is the erase head. Instead of having a plug, prior to this it would have had a connector and you could have unplugged it. In this case, it's got wires coming out of the bottom that go down and they go around underneath the board and they're soldered on the bottom. Uh, there's nothing that, nothing that plugs in on this chassis as far as the VCR mechanism goes to, uh, to, 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 to take it out and work on it. Definitely designed not to be serviced under any circumstances. Truly a throwaway combination. And the thing is, these wouldn't have been cheap because they had a VCR on them as well. Uh, you know, these would have cost a couple hundred bucks. I would have, I would think. You know, this probably sold for four or five hundred dollars when it was new. Probably sold for three ninety nine because it had a VCR built in. Okay, that part works. Let's see. Turn it back on. I don't have a remote for this thing. So one thing that's nice about this one is, uh, oh, okay. Looks like you can. Uh, Then you can operate it without the remote control. Timer programming. You can actually set the time on this thing. I'm impressed. How do you go up and down? I guess like that. It knows, it, it, it knows the year. Compared to uh, within the RCMP. That looks a little bit better, full screen. Acoustic alchemy. There we go. Okay, this thing's uh, back together. We'll t just do a, another test on the VCR and then I'm going to put the back on it and uh, get it on its way. This tape's got lots of miles on it. Lots and lots of miles. I bought it video store. One of the video stores out my way when it first came out. Once they, you know, the, the store would get like, you know, like 500 copies of a movie when it came out. You know, not, not, maybe not 500 copies, but they get like 20 copies or 30 copies of a popular movie when it came out. And then once the uh, hype died down, they'd sell them off cheap. So I paid seven bucks for it. Used to use this when I was in the shop working for testing stuff. So this tape has been played literally hundreds upon hundreds of times but can't play it for you guys but I'm gonna play it on here and test it that's about all I can show we'll test some of the other features like search forward yeah it's just it's a two-head machine so it's not going to work very good as far as search goes but search forward search backwards oh, the VHS have a bad picture and uh, fast forward Rewind. Make sure all the features work. Eject.
no damage to the tape. It's fixed. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.